Tammuz is another name for Jesus of 2000 years ago, whose galactical name is Sananda and whose ancient Sumerian name is Tammuz. The name Tammuz can be found in the ancient tablets entitled Tammuz and Ishtar in cuneiform. Tammuz is your appointed deity by the anointer, the netter, Anu the heavenly one. Tammuz's name can be found in the Old Testament in Ezekiel 8:14. Ezekiel 8:14 then he brought me to the door of the gate of Yahuwah's house which was upon the north, and here, right there sat down a female living being weeping for Tammuz. Right translation in Aramaic Hebrew by, Netter, Ephrati Adam Re. In the previous quote, the name Tammuz means the sprout of life. This is in accordance to the Strong's Concordance of the Bible. Tammuz in Sumerian means the faithful son. Tammuz was known by the Babylonians as Damuzi, but that was also his father's name, which they say means god of pastures and flocks, of subterranean water, and vegetation. Tammuz was originally a disagreeable Anunnaki, Elohim is found in the ancient tablets of the Atra Hasis and he was converted to being an agreeable being. Tammuz was the son of Ishtar and Damuzi. Read the glory of Jesus, the Messiah scroll number 115. Tammuz was also called Adonis, which is where the Aramic, Hebrew, Israelites or Jews get the name Adonai which can be found in Exodus 4.10. And I quote, And Moses said to Yahweh Adonai O my Yahweh, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech, and of a slow tongue. It is obvious that Moses is talking to his and their God and refers to him as Adonai, which was Tammuz's personal name. The Phoenician and Greek Adonis, the Hebrew Adonai, the Phrygian Addis, Egypt, Horus, and other well-known types of dying sons of Mother Earth. The worship of Tammuz in Babylonia and those adjacent lands to which it spread was a cult of sorrow, death and resurrection. Tammuz was converted into being an agreeable Elohim when he was captured by the Elohim and the scientist Nergal, who was the master of the underworld. Tammuz was taken because the Anunnaki, Elohim, wanted to convert him from disagreeable to agreeable. His mother, Ishtar, broke through the seven seals to get to the inner city of Garda, in order to get her son back and stop what was about to happen. Ishtar was captured by Arishkegel, the wife of Nergal who was also a scientist, and imprisoned her. Arishkegel caught Ishtar because she recognized her disguise, as a Kuthite, however Ishtar eventually escaped to the surface of the earth. Isser used Tammuz as her alibi and released Enki from the underworld. She exalted Tammuz, or Abu his other name. Ishtar raised Tammuz to a god and she exalted him in ancient Babylonian writings. When the Netaru of Agarda, Ashara, converted Tammuz to an agreeable he was assigned to oversee you as your Allah for 6,000 years. Thus, he became the master of agreeable and disagreeable. Tammuz is the name of the Babylonian god who corresponds to the Tamarine, Egyptian, god Usr, Osiris, he is also a Yahweh because Yahweh in the plural is Elohim and under the great Netter Shil Netaru the deity that Melchizedek taught to Abraham in Genesis 14:18. The Netter Shil Netaru is the real deity of all Jews, Christians and Muslims but they worship subsidiaries as you see in Malachi 1:9. Yahweh and I quote, and now I pray you beseech God. The word used for God is, El, the short form of Elohim, singled out as meaning strength, mighty, powerful of the Chaldean origin, brought from the cuneiform deity El. To have pity upon us so that maybe by way of his hands he will fit your faces said Yahweh of the, Elohim, angelic army. It's clear that Yahweh, referred to himself as a part of an us in this verse, and that Yahweh is thus a group of beings. Any individual Elohim is called a Elo, a short Yahweh. The Sumerians are the ones that the Netaru came to and gave advance information on the creation of the solar system, and all of the planets in and out of this solar system. They also taught them how to build great cities, farming and how to build crafts that could fly in the air. When these Netaru came to the Sumerians and after cloning and breeding them from Homo erectus into Homo sapiens, Adamites, who by force were mixed in with the Hindu or serpent people, the Sumerians thought they were god beings, because of the ships they traveled in and because the Anunnaki were more advanced than them. They were indeed gods. The Sumerians were the first to record the existence of the Netaru on the planet Ta, Earth, on slates of stone in the Netaru's language. Now called cuneiform. The Sumerians recorded scientific facts and logged the motion of the moon. They used a calendar based on the movement of the moon. The ancient Sumerians divided a circle representing the full moon and into 360 degrees each degree at 60 minutes. If you divide this into 360 degrees you get 6 degrees of 60 minutes each. Your modem day clock also uses a circle and each minute has 60 seconds, which is the modem day fact being used for the modem clocks. The Sumerians used degrees of angles as measurement for time. However, we use numbers that have been assigned to these angles. The Sumerians also divided the stars into 12 parts, they used 12 or by 60 for measurement more than 3000 years ago. 
They use the number sky maps because the stars or constellations tie into the 12 signs of the zodiac. Ancient Sumer was surrounded strategically by 12 countries which corresponded to the signs of the zodiac and the zodiac served as a road map and a sky map. All astronauts from other galaxies, follow the zodiac. The Netaru live by the sign of the zodiac and are firm believers of it. Our old sciences were all based around the star of the heavens, our lands and all. You see, Mary is no more than Aset, Isis, our mother, our blessed mother Isis while in Tamari, Egypt. When we are in Samaria she was called Ishtar, and Osiris was our heavenly father. He was our link to Ra, the sun, the life source. In Samaria he was called Damuzi. And Damuzi and Ishtar had a very special son that they called Tammuz. That's why the Babylonians have on their calendar Tammuz and the Jews when they left out of the captivity of Nebuchadnezzar, they carried that title and it's in the Jewish calendar right now. Tammuz is still on the calendar. If you look throughout Tamarin, Egyptian, history, you see that many of the characteristics of Haru, Horus, parallels that of Jesus of 2000 years ago. Only the story of Haru, Horus, goes back thousands of years before the story of Jesus of the New Testament Bible was born and recorded. For instance, it is said that, Jesus did the miracle of turning five loaves of bread in one case and seven in another to feed the many multitudes of people, Matthew 15 34-37, and this ties in with Haru, Horus, who makes seven loaves of bread for Osiris to live by. Jesus is in the desert and being tempted by the devil, who said to him, if he was the son of God tum a stone into bread. Matthew 4 1-3, the stone of the desert is the symbol of Suchu, Set. When Jesus was 12 he disappeared from Mary and Joseph and was in the temples talking with the priests and Pharisees. When he reached age 30 he was anointed in the Jordan and began his teachings. As the child Haru, Horus, comes to the earth he enters matter or becomes flesh. He is born as the word of his father who becomes Seb, whose consort is Nut whose other name is Mary which is the same as Jesus coming down to earth as the word of God in the flesh having an adopted father of Joseph who is Seb and Mary his mother. Jesus said I and the father are one. He that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. Haru, Horus, is the father seen in the son. Jesus claims to be the son in whom the father is revealed. Haru, Horus, was the light of the world. The light that is represented by the symbolical eye, the son of salvation. Jesus is made to declare that he is the light of the world. Haru, Horus, was the way, his name is the sign of the two roads, the truth, and the life. Jesus said, I am come down from heaven. For this is the will of the Father that everyone who beholdeth the Son and believeth in him should have eternal life. Haru, Horus, said, It is I who traverse the heaven, I go round the second Aru, the Elysian fields, eternity has been assigned to me without end. Lo! I am heir of endless time and my attribute is eternity, and I will raise him up at the last day, he too claims to be the Lord of eternity. Jesus is called the Good Shepherd with the Lamb or Kid on his shoulder, Haru, Horus, was the Good Shepherd who carries the crook upon his shoulder. Jesus is called the Lamb of God, Haru, Horus, is called the Lamb of God. Jesus is the bread of life, Haru, Horus, is also the bread of life. Jesus is the truth and the light, Haru, Horus, is also the truth and the light. Jesus is the way and the door to eternal life, Haru, Horus, was the door of entrance into Amenta, which none could open. Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, Haru, Horus, was baptized by Anup the Baptizer. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, the house of bread, Haru, Horus, was born in Anu, the place of bread. Jesus the Christ, Haru, Horus, the Karost. The star in the east that indicated the birthplace of Jesus, the star as announcer of the child Haru, Horus. The blind man given sight by Jesus, the blind mummy made to see by Haru. Jesus walking on water, Haru walking the water and the list just goes on and on. If you look at the entire concept of the Jesus of the New Testament story you can clearly see it is but subtle Egyptian mysteries. Let's examine the story. The birth of Jesus by the Virgin Mary was from a miraculous conception with the help of a Holy Ghost or Spirit of God, who gave birth to the Son of God, Luke 1 26-34. After his birth the angel Gabriel tells Joseph to take baby Jesus into Egypt. So Mary and Joseph had to flee from the hands of Herod who sought to kill baby Jesus, Matthews 1:20. He stayed in Egypt until he was at the age of 13, and then came back and preached in the temple, Luke 2 41-49. As he grew older he began disputing rulers over the Jews, who were the Pharisees and Sadducees, Matthew 5 20, Jesus is born to die on the cross for man's sins, 1 Corinthians 15 1-10. Jesus performs miracles, one of which he walks on water, John 6 19. 
he is then betrayed by Judas and is crucified, Matthew 26 14 to 15, 27 35, then dies on the cross. He is then in the earth for three days and three nights, which is not calculated in the Bible as being three days or three nights. Check your scripture again, Matthew 12 40, 27 40, chapter 28, Mark chapter 16 and Luke chapter 24. He then resurrects as the sun rising, Matthew chapter 28. Now listen to the story of Haru, Horus, and his mother Aset, Isis. Harus, Horus, father was Asaru, Osiris, son of Geb and Nut. Asaru, Osiris, was murdered by his brother Suchuk, Set, who wanted to take his brother's throne. Suchuk, Set, made a chest for Asaru, Osiris, and tricked him into getting into it then sealed the chest making it a deadly coffin. He then carried his chest to the mouth of the Nile and cast it into the sea. Aset, Isis, seeking her husband to give him a rightful burial found herself at the shores of Byblus in Phoenicia where the chest had washed up. She then recovered the chest from the rulers of Byblus, King Melkarthus and his female ruler, who had erected a pillar over it to support their palace. Set found out she recovered the body, captured it and cut it up into 14 pieces and threw it into the Nile. Aset, Isis, and her sister Nephthys searched the Nile and found all of the pieces except for the phallus. Using her magic, she skillfully brought the individual parts together and made the body whole again then she wrapped him in bandages of a mummy. Aset, Isis, took the form of a bird and used her wings to blow air into his nostrils restoring his soul to life and making it free to depart into the other world. Still in the form of a bird Aset came to rest on the body of her dead husband and using her magic she conceived their son Haru. Haru and Aset, Isis, remained in hiding in the swamps of the delta until Haru was strong enough and old enough to avenge his father. He then set up troops in the swamp and battled Suchuk, Set, who had taken rulership while Aset, Isis, went in search of Asaru's, Osiris, body. The soldiers that were under Suchuk, Set, broke rank for their loyalty to Asaru, Osiris, and fought with Haru, Horus. Haru, Horus, defeated Suchuk, Set, but not before losing his right eye to Suchuk, Set, which became known as Ojet. Now if you read the story of Jesus you can see within it the story of Haru, Horus. 1. Jesus' miraculous conception is compared to Haru, Horus, miraculous conception. 2. Jesus as a baby and Mary fleeing from Herod is compared to Aset, Isis, and Haru, Horus, fleeing from Suchuk, Set, in the swamps of the Delta. 3. Jesus remained in Egypt until he was old enough to go back to Jerusalem which was 13. He was called the King of the Jews and liberated the Judahites from the Pharisees and Sadducas who were appointed authority figures over the Judahites. Haru, Horus, remained in the swamps of the delta until he was old enough to defeat Suchuk, Set. Those soldiers who were being ruled with an iron hand left Suchuk, Set, and fought with Haru, Horus, because of loyalty to Asaru, Osiris. 4. Jesus was the Son of God who was crucified, died for the sins of man and resurrected to save the world from sin. Haru, Horus, was the son of Anetar Asaru, Osiris, who was resurrected and from him, his son rose up to revenge him. 5. Jesus was symbolized by a bird, the dove, Haru, Horus, was symbolized by the falcon. 6. Aset, Osiris, and her sister Nephthys searched for the pieces to Asaru's, Osiris, body which Suchuk had chopped into 14 pieces and threw in the Nile. Aset, Isis, with her magic along with the help of the Netter Anubu, Anubis, resurrected Asaru, Osiris. This is directly related to Mary Magdalene and her sister who searched for the body of Jesus only to find, according to one recording, he had resurrected, Matthews chapter 28, Mark chapter 16, Luke chapter 24. I can go on and on. This is just to give you a clear overstanding that the Jesus of your Bible came from the Tama Reen deity Haru or Horus and Christianity came from the various stories from Egypt. The story was just reiterated as most stories in your Bible are. They are stories from old tablets such as the Enuma Elish, and the Gilgamesh epic. The names were just changed in different cultures. In fact, the names of the Bible aren't even names, they are titles. For example, the story of Abraham, Sarah and Hagar in the Bible is just the story of Anu, Antum and Lid in the Enuma Elish. The story of Hagar and Ishmael in the Bible is the story of Lid and Enki. The story of Cain and Abel in the Bible is just the story of Osiris and Set and Enki and Enlil. The story of Aklamia and Lapuuda in the Bible is the same story as Nephthys and Isis in the Tama Reen records. There is an article in the Philadelphia Daily News dated Wednesday, December 16, 1998 entitled Tablets, Egyptians Had the Right Stuff. In the article it states how in Cairo Egypt an archaeologist found clay tablets that were found in the tomb of a king called Scorpion. 
It also states how the first people to write were Sumerians. As you can see I am not the only one saying this. The archaeologists stated that the tablets have been carbon dated with certainty to between 3300 BC and 3200 BC. He went on to say the discovery throws open for debate a widely held belief among historians that the first people to write were the Sumerians of the Mesopotamian civilization sometime before 3000 BC. The exact date of Sumerian writing remains in doubt. The Egyptian writings in the form of line drawings of animals, plants and mountains are the first evidence that hieroglyphics used by later-day pharaonic dynasties did not rise as phoenix from the ashes but developed gradually, Dreyer said. For example, the city named Ba Set was written by putting together a throne known as Ba and a stork, Set. Similarly, Jugare, Mountain of Darkness, a reference to its location in the west where the sun set, was designated with those symbols. Apart from academic question of who came first, Dreyer said, the writings prove that the early Egyptian society was far more developed than previously thought. Something I have been saying for years. First of all, most people don't realize that the Jesus story they read about was a play written by Arius Calpumius Piso, whose pen name was Flavius Joseph. He was a Roman playwright, and this is why they call his life a passion play. 